Yo, what's good with y'all? Hope y'all doing well today. So in this video, I'm gonna show y'all how to make a beat for Nav, similar to Wheezy and Tay Keith. Per usual, I made this beat from scratch, so I'm gonna show y'all my whole process of making the beat. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe. And with all that being said, let's just hop right into the sample. So the first thing I want to talk about is the tempo. The one I chose was 148 beats per minute. The beats that Wheezy ended up doing on the album were a little bit faster in tempo. I think those were between like 150 and 180 beats per minute. But I think one of them was probably closer to like 140 or 150. And I believe Never Sleep was around like the 150-ish, 160 range. I decided to go for something that was a little bit slower, just so it fit the drum bounce that I had in mind. So for my first melody sound, I went into Analog Lab, into the Black Hole Bank, and I got this Plug Rhodes EPNO preset. And I put in this pretty straightforward melody. It's using the C minor scale, and it's only just four notes for this melody, which is the first, second, third, and fifth notes in the scale and I just kind of arranged them like this where I started on the fifth note which is G and then just moved my way up the scale and also I only really made the first measure of the pattern and then I just copied it over for the remaining seven measures. And I routed that to a mixer track and I put a couple effects on it. The first one being this EQ, it's just cutting out the lows and the highs and then a couple harsher frequencies in the mids. And then I put on some RC20 on the vinyl three preset. I turned off the noise and adjusted the wobble and space knobs. For my next sound, I got this bell wand shot. With this sound, I just wanted to create a top counter melody for the first Rhodes pattern. And similar to that one, I just wanted to make something that was kind of simpler and catchy. And I'm just using those same four notes in addition to the fourth note in the scale, which is F. But overall, it's pretty much the same type of vibe. For effects on the bell, I just put on some RC20 on the Lush and Crunch Guitar 2 preset. So that's all I had for sounds in the MIDI. As for the rest of the sounds, it's just a few accents that I ended up putting in. I believe all of these accents and maybe even the bell sound were from Max Shooter's Sound Source Kit. If you want to use the same or similar sounds, that's where I got it from. So the first accent that I ended up putting in was hitting on the first beat of the first measure, and it sounds like this. And I set the mode to stretch and time stretched it so it fits the tempo that I'm working with. For my next one shot, I got this one and trimmed off a little bit of the front end. I had this hit on the first beat of the third and the seventh measures. For my last accent sound, I got this one and I only really used like the second half of it. So putting them all together with the first two patterns, the sample sounds like this so far. After that, I routed each of those sounds to their own individual mixer track, and I armed each of them by highlighting this red button right here, and then hitting Alt-R on my keyboard, and then hitting Start in this menu to render out each of the stems as audio clips. And I've gotten a lot of comments asking why I do that. I primarily do it to save CPU space, and also to prevent the sounds from bleeding into each other after each eight bar loop. So then after I did that, I took the audio clip stems and I put them into a new arrangement. I went up to the playlist and arrangement of up here and then hit add one and in the new arrangement arranged each of those stems to kind of form the final loop and one of the changes that i made is i set each of the audio clips to stretch and i pitched it up by 100 cents except for the second bell melody i pitched that down by 1100 cents which is just an octave down from the rest of them and then i took the first Rhodes pattern i duplicated it over and made it unique as sample i changed this so that it was also pitched down by 1100 cents so it's an octave down from this one and then after i did that i went to the mixer track and i put a few effects on the master track. The first effect is just a default fruity chorus with the mix level at about 30%. Next, I put in a frequency splitter and just cut out some of those higher frequencies. And then I put on some delay with these settings. And then I put on some halftime on the one half loop and the one and a half mode setting. This also changes the key of the sample. I think it pushes it down by five half steps. So the key of the sample before putting halftime on it was C sharp minor, which means that the final render of it is in G sharp minor. The chorus and the halftime are the main two things that give the sample that dark and mysterious type of vibe. All 
All right, so once I had the finished loop, I imported it into a new FOP and I made a few tweaks to the loop before I added the drums to it. So the first thing that I did is I set the project tempo to the same as the loop, which was 148. And then I opened up the audio menu and I changed the mode to stretch. And then I also pitched it down by 400 cents. So the key of the drums and the finish track are in E minor. And then I went up to this range right here and I moved it up to 12 and moved the pitch up all the way. So it's an octave up. I feel like having it in E minor was already kind of low. So I just decided to pitch it up an octave so that the lower sounds in the sample didn't clash with the 808s in the other drums. So the first couple sounds I added were a clap and a snare. And these are just layered on the third beat of each measure. So the clap sounds like this. And this is what the snare sounds like. So layered together and just putting them in the typical clap spot, it sounds like this. Next, I put in my hi-hat pattern. For this pattern, I only really made the first four measures and just copied it over for the remaining four. It's pretty much just a two-step and then I just add this like triplet roll in each of the measures. And then I played around with the pitch on some of these and I just added some rolls. I believe those are all using the one third step snap to grid. And then I just added these lower notes that Wheezy sometimes likes to use just to add a little extra depth to it. So after the hi-hat and the clap, I added my snare sound and I put in a pretty typical snare pattern and I put in a couple rolls just to add a little bit of variation to it. Overall, I tried to keep the snare pattern a little on the simpler side. And then for my next drum sound, I put in this open hat. I had this hit on the fourth beat of the second and sixth measures. And then lastly, my last two drum patterns, I put in my 808. Both of them are using the same sound, which is this shortened and boosted spin sound. To make the 808 decay a little faster, I just turned the out knob a little bit. So it's about like 15 or 20%. Since there's already a lot going on with the melodics and the hi-hats, I didn't really want to do too much with these 808s, but I did add a little bit of variation to them so they're not all just the same note. And then for my second 808 pattern, like I said earlier, it's using the same sound, but it's pretty much just a simplified version of it and just changing around some of the notes here at the end. So that's going to do it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed it and found it pretty helpful. Leave any thoughts or recommendations you have for me in the comments. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. So I'll see you all next time. Peace.